After cooking in the early access oven for several months, we finally have Darkest Dungeon 2 in its full release. And with it, the final chapters 4 and 5, which I'm gonna tell you right now, are absolutely spectacular. Now, if you watch my previous DD2 video, you know that we somehow managed to beat Acts 1, 2, and 3 on a fresh new save file without ever losing a run. So, of course, I took this band of heroes that had survived this far into Acts 4 and 5 to see if we could make it. And they did manage to beat Act 4, but Act 5, the final boss, absolutely destroyed me. I had lost this deathless run at the final moment, but it was such an exciting fight that I wanted to try it again. And on the second attempt, I managed to chip away its massive health down to less than 1%, and then I died. And at this point, I decided that I didn't just want to beat this boss, I wanted to humiliate it. I wanted to have my revenge. I would go back and try the whole challenge again, beating all five backs back to back without ever losing a run, without using easy mode, we would beat the whole game flawlessly. Ready to start anew, we went straight into the first act again. This one is a little bit shorter and easier than the other one, so things were pretty smooth for the most part. And the most interesting thing that happened is that we decided to fight this Shambler on a complete whim. After defeating it, we got ourselves a really interesting trinket that only works when your character is exactly at 5 stress. It is a little bit tricky to use, but if you manage to, you will do massive amounts of damage over time. So of course, I wanted to try it out. And in the final boss fight of the act, I put it on my Plague Doctor, and when the conditions were met, she threw an item that hit all of the enemies and then followed it up with her own Blight attack. Doing this had an immediate effect on her stress, which tipped over the board and basically got her kill right away, but it didn't matter, in a single turn she had dealt 118 damage over time across the entire enemy ranks. Much like Malenia in Elden Ring, she decided to go out with a massive poisonous bang, and needless to say, the padlocks didn't last much long after that. Time for the second act, and we had a very simple plan. Unlock some basic upgrades and switch out our Grave Robber for a Ravager Helion for extra damage. Now the nice thing about Helion is that she can hit the front and the back with very reliable damage and this is essential for the final boss of this confession. In this fight, the lungs on the side of the boss will occasionally get inflated and if you don't do enough damage to them, this will result in a massive attack that is very hard to recover from. Luckily, the Helion did her job beautifully and she was assisted by our Highwayman, who does really good ranged damage thanks to his sharp shot path and some abilities we had picked up along the way. Overall, our preparation had really paid off and the fight was going really well, up until the boss started to inflate both lungs at once and we couldn't do enough damage. If our man at arms didn't do 12 damage here, we could be in some trouble. We now have a 3 in 4 to do enough. 3 in 4. Yes! 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 Oh my god! We, did, we didn't do enough damage! It felt really good to see the relationships we had built over the course of the journey finally pay off and save our butt and the rest of this fight went really really well. But now we reach Act 3 and this one had, at least at the time, the reputation of having the most unpredictable and brutal final boss of them all. And my plan for it was risky. We would be swapping out our Helion, which is a very reliable damage dealer, for an Occultist who has not the best reputation, he's considered one of the weakest characters in the game at the moment at least, but he also had an important role to fill. He would be providing some occasional healing and much needed bank rank damage, but in particular he would specialize in debuffing enemies. Thanks to his path, a pet that we just unlocked and some items to enhance it, he would have a very high debuff pierce stat which would let him apply these debuffs to even the most resilient of enemies. And this also left a combo token on them that our Highwayman could take advantage of. He had now switched to a melee class and did extra bleed damage to anyone with a combo token. And to make his bleed damage even more ridiculous, we actually went out of our way to hunt down for this particular trophy that required us to be the Leviathan. Now this is typically a tough fight, but we had the perfect team for it. Our Surgeon Man at Arms is immune to being moved and thus cannot be grabbed by the Leviathan Hand that will typically try to drown your characters. And if another character was targeted, he would simply defend them and the Hand would waste several turns trying to grab them with no success. In the meantime, we did as much damage as possible to the main head and eventually we killed it and secured our strategy. 
for some reason, most of my characters had contracted a very mild disease, but I didn't think much of this at the time. I continued to go on and things went really smooth up until the moment where I delivered the final blow on the exemplar before the mountain. I had beaten him without much issue, but I forgot to get rid of his little companion, which then blew up, inflicted stress and put one of my characters into meltdown. The damage that this did to my party was irreparable and it rippled well into the mountain. Instead of going into the final boss in good shape, my stress and health left much to be desired. And when the boss itself came around, things went even worse. Ideally, you want to have all of these little eyeballs focus their orange tokens on your tankiest character. But I fail utterly at doing this, so when the second phase begun and the big eyeball showed up, it hit all of them like a truck. Even though this was a major blow, I understood that my ability to do damage was still mostly there. I had inflicted a lot of bleed and blight, and if I could just survive for a few more rounds, that might be just enough to kill it. But then this happened. This is absolutely hopeless. Unless I've resolute saves my ass. But I don't think I've ever resoluted in all my attempts here. He courted the unthinkable, but to no avail. What did he die from? What did he just die from? That one minor disease that we had contracted earlier, it actually had a chance to damage us, and when it did, it immediately killed my occultist, and with it, any hopes of this party surviving. All of the careful planning that I had laid out in theory had utterly failed in practice. It became clear to me that the Focus Fall wasn't just a difficult boss, it was the main obstacle of this entire run. And we had to treat it as such. We could not just walk up to it and try our luck again, we had to make a strategy that revolved entirely around it. And instead of thinking of Acts 1 and 2 as their own individual entities, we had to treat them as a stepping stone, a preparation phase to reach the Focus Fault at our full potential. The very first adjustment to our strategy happened very early on. In Darkest Dungeon 2, when you start a new campaign, the game makes you go through a very brief tutorial segment. Here, you fight a couple battles and learn the basics, but we quickly realized that we could actually take advantage of this by going out of our way to kill three of our own characters. Normally, when someone dies, you can carry their corpse to the next inn to get some extra candles, and this is a very minor and forgettable thing, it's just there to reward and encourage people that don't give up too early. But for some reason, it also works here in the tutorial. And getting those extra 12 candles at the start would allow us to unlock certain things that would be really helpful to have early on. The first one that we wanted was the healing solve. This is a healing item that is super convenient and it's nice to have it early on, but unfortunately there's a bit of luck involved and you might get a lot of other combat items while trying to unlock it. But what do you know, we got it on our first try and the extra candles that we saved were used instead to upgrade our coach and unlock the flagellant, which is a really fun character that is actually pretty good for the first act. For some reason, when we reached the final boss with him, he decided to get hit by every single attack for like 5 turns in a row and ended up dying really early, but his sacrifice must have inspired the other three because they managed to carry on without him, no problem. Well, some problems, but nothing that we couldn't handle. It was now the turn for Act 2, and this time around we did some things differently. First, we didn't unlock any new characters, and also we went out of our way not to unlock any trinket at all. This put us at a slight disadvantage, but it will make sense why we did it later. Instead, we focus on spending most of our candles on upgrading our stagecoach, and also unlock the best classes for each of our original 4 heroes, which at this point were looking pretty strong. After that, my biggest concern was food. By default, the only food that you find at inns is this awful moldy dish that has a very minor buff and can even give you a disease if you eat it, so I was extremely happy when we unlocked the stale braid on our first roll yet again. Without too much trouble, we eventually reached the final boss, and this time around we did not have the Helion, which was our best offensive character. This could have been really troublesome, but we had found an item to increase the attack of our highwayman, and thanks to it he could put out just enough damage to destroy each of the lungs when necessary. Being blinded multiple times is also a common occurrence in this fight, and this could have easily snowballed into a complete disaster, but we were also fortunate enough to find and buy some milk soaked linens, and this could be used to remove our blindness and keep up our damage, and eventually, even though our strategy was arguably simpler than before, the seething side fell, and we were now ready to roll on to Act 3 with our new grand plan. 
we've already seen what the Focus Fault is capable of, but let's break it down a bit further. Once it appears, this boss will use its turn to target any hero with the Orange Sin token. This will deliver a massive attack onto them, so ideally we want all of these tokens to be fully stacked onto our tank, since they are the most likely one to survive it. Healing or mitigating the damage becomes increasingly impossible, so that means that at some point our tank is likely to die. And when that happens, the boss will use Behold to find a new target and then start the process all over again. There is only one exception to this pattern, and it happens whenever one of the other characters lands a critical attack. At first, they will be marked, and if this happens a second time, the boss will suddenly realize that it's probably taken too much damage from them, and temporarily shift its focus away from our tank and onto the marked targets. It will hit them with a ton of debuffs, possibly even stun them, and then remove the marks so that it can focus again on the tank. But what if we could keep the marks? If the marks were unremoved, the boss would theoretically be stuck in an infinite loop of using Suppress. Doing this is not technically possible for us, but we can do something very similar. First, our Highwayman will use Take Aim to get multiple crit tokens. If it loses the mark in one turn, he will try to land another crit as soon as possible to get it back and keep it up as consistently as possible. Then, our Grey Robber has to land a critical hit as well. She will then be defended by our tank, the Man at Arms, and Suppress will instead hit him, which means that she gets to keep the mark for at least another turn. If we keep this up, we can keep baiting the boss to use Suppress over and over, hopefully for long enough, so that our Plague Doctor can stack enough poison damage to eventually kill it. Even though this was a solid plan, we still needed perfect execution. If we misplayed the first phase, there's a good chance that the tokens would be too spread out and our party members would get wiped out within just a few turns. If at any point we get hit by a suppress attack that stuns multiple people, that would also get us killed very quickly, so we had to make sure to stock up on items and trinkets to increase our resistances. And most importantly, if our Grave Robber didn't land the critical attack in the first place, this whole strategy would fail before it even begun. Now, even though she's pretty good at this, even with her best path, the Grave Robber attacks are far from being a guaranteed critical. But this is where our preparation comes in. By making sure that we never unlocked a trinket before, and then spending a lot of candles now, we were eventually guaranteed to find this bad boy, the Silent Treatment. This is a trinket that would increase the damage that our Grave Robber would take, which is bad, but with the right setup, it would also bring her critical chances all the way up to 88 or even 100%. For even regular battles, this turned out to be really powerful. Overall, the run was going very well, but it was at this moment that I made a small mistake. This ghoul enemy did an attack that reduced my torch, and I failed to notice it. A little bit after, I had one final chance to buy an item to restore my torch, but I didn't even think of it, and down the road, eventually my torch ran out because I couldn't restore it otherwise. At this moment, we were just a few inches away from reaching the mountain, but with a fully depleted torch, we could be ambushed by strong enemies at any moment. And unfortunately, that's exactly what happened. Okay, this is bad. It's bad, but it could be much worse. Let's go. Not him! Oh my god! Alright, chat. Believe it or not, we have a solution out of this. Take aim, give himself like 25 different buffs, debuffs, and whatnot, and then we hit him with a massive this. Or, yeah, no, this for sure. Eric. And we're more or less hauling in there. He's blind. Shit. Almost dead, almost dead, almost dead. No! What is it then? 24! I have some ideas, but this is all bad. Nice. That's not even funny, dudes. Not even funny. Why so little? Fuck. I guess my health is real low. Oh, we're alive. That's what matters. 
Nice. Might be able to stun it too. Actually, it's a guaranteed stun, I think. And fire. Oh, thanks, dude. I needed that tiny little break, believe it or not. He relieves your stress, and we are fine. Not great, but fine. Oh my god. Okay, good. It's done. Nice. We barely managed to overcome this ambush, but immediately after followed one of the toughest enemies in the game, the Exemplar. And this time, it would not be so easy. Not gonna lie. Not gonna lie, this... this is no time to falter. Dude, we cannot die now. Please, dude. Oh, that little Kirub. He might actually hit her. Oh, that's... Dude, that's no way to go. Please. Oh, please tell me that's not how I'm gonna die. Please, man. Oh, thank you. Phew. Um, shit, though. He might need to defend someone else. Let's see what happens now. No! No! Nothing can no! Organic failure. Shit. Uh, we have a chance to resolute. Oh. With the sudden loss of our plague doctor, there was no doubt in my mind that this run was completely over. She was our only healer and our best source to inflict blight and damage over time, and she was gone. But things weren't quite over yet. Our remaining three heroes managed to beat the Exemplar and reach the inn, and in it, they were greeted by our old friend the Flagellant. He was the only character we had unlocked, and thus the only one that could possibly show up to fill the spot in our party, and he was a decent replacement for our Plague Doctor. He could also heal and inflict blight, and his bigger health pool would allow him to at least survive some hits if he was targeted. In the end, that's exactly what happened. Both him and the man-at-arms managed to soak up the scene tokens, and now it was time to see what they were really made of. On Wait. Is this a good or a bad thing? It might be okay. Health up? Okay, good. Alright, cool. He does less damage, but is that a big deal? No, not really. Alright, off you go, king. Mess them up. This is looking somewhat promising, believe it or not. Our strategy, in its most basic form, is kinda there. Right, so the most important thing now is make sure my stress doesn't overflow. Um, I'm going to defend... ...our Grave Rubber. You'll see why, it will make sense. Uh, we need to go for a hundred crit if possible. Nice. So notice that she's marked, right? While she is marked, nothing bad will happen. Yet. But when this guy gets marked, which is gonna happen right now, he will start to use suppress. And this is really bad. It's really bad. But guess what? Because she's being defended, she keeps getting uh, defended from removing this combo. Which means that if we do this well, we could theoretically keep him using suppress instead of the big attack. This is a strategy developed by Thick, who's in the chat, and it's really, really smart. Uh, giving him dodge would also be incredible. Let's do it. Awesome. Uh, this is working out okay, I think. But he will do a big attack. So how am I gonna deal with that? If our Flagellant dies this early, it's no good. I 
can't really help, can I? It's okay, he'll be alright. Believe in him. Lash's gift? Oh, it removes days. That's nice. Heals me and also will give him shield. That's pretty perfect. Gives him one stress, but we'll take it. I could also even... Let's do it. Oh! This might work out! Hmm. Unfortunately, we can't use that attack back to back to back, so... Yeah, watch out. Alright, this is good. Now he's gonna be baited into using Suppress again. But he gets protected. Whoa, stun? Wait, why did he, what he why did he get stunned? Oh no. Wait, he stole all my crits. Oh dear, what the hell am I gonna Oh this is awful. Wait, this wait, this ignores this ignores touch! It ignores touch! Okay, okay, this could still be decent damage. It's not crit, so it's not. But we remove two things. Okay, now what? Uh, I'm at zero HP, which is bad, but I do have dodge. Thanks to this little thing we have. Uh, I can't attack, though. If I attack, I will probably kill myself. So, what's the deal? Pass and get health, of course. There remains nice. A foothold out of this mire. Now climb. Okay, careful now. We need to be very, very careful. Uh, is she being protected? I mean, she has dodge. Hmm, he's gonna be stunned. That's so sad. Let's do this. Let's assume that this guy has a chance to die and accept that as part of fate. Damn, that stun is bad. That stun is really bad. It means this guy's get hit again. He dodged it though! Nice! Knows what lurks in the beyond. Right. Okay. Let's not waste this opportunity. What do we want to do? Uh, 88 chance to crit? Let's go for it. Uh, 88, not 100, I guess. They both hit that star! Yeah, that's not very good. Let's heal. Stay in the fight for a bit longer. Uh, what can I do, guys? Deathless. This will damage him and could even kill him. Dude, if only Lash's gift was available still. I can't stress the heal. Mm. Let's do Endure and pray to God. What is his chance to die? 48. Ooh, it's literally gonna come down to a point cost. If he would- if he was to hit a uh, max stress again, that would be good because the crit gets like this toxic, which makes him become poisonous when he attacks, becomes even stronger. Alright, I think I need to start using this, man. The enemy you never know. Wanes. This is so sad. They're gonna die next turn. Well done! Keep it up! If only... There's a loot! Oh. Alright. Come on, there must be something you can do. There must be something you can do, man. Give her dodge before you die. Maybe. Of course. They might be wiped. Another old right, it's not all bad. Down his life in the it's not all bad. Distant land. 38 crit. 18 crit. Nice. Would be nice if we could. You know what's gonna happen, guys. Alright, big dodges. Big dodges on the two of you. I think this is undodgeable. <gasps> it is dodgeable! <gasps> That's big! As long as he does that, he can't do anything! Chance to crit? Let's go! 
He's gonna try to suppress. Nice! It's awful, but I mean, it might just die on its own. <gasps> He's gonna wipe me really quickly, though. The moment it starts with the limerence, which is one turn after now, this goes downhill real quick. Let's start to drink. I reckon it literally dies on its own. Barely, but it dies on its own if we just survive. Let's please do that. Nice. Fight through the fatigue. Bang bang, mother! Obsession. Despite the major setbacks, we had managed to improvise our way and make our plan actually work. We had defeated the Act 3 boss and put behind us what was possibly the hardest part of this entire run. Going into Act 4, we spent a huge amount of candles into the final upgrades of our stagecoach and also decided to unlock the Runaway. This is a character that has some excellent skills for this act and in particular its final boss, but she also has one major downside, and that is the Sprawl. This is an area that holds some of the best trinkets for her, but if you bring her here, almost all of the enemies are resistant to her fire attacks and she could easily get the entire team killed. However, in a massive stroke of luck, we got the Sprawl early on and we had the option to hire the Bounty Hunter. This is a character that can replace one of your party members, so we took him to the Sprawl instead of the Runaway and our weakness was completely covered. He was so strong that we beat the boss of the Sprawl, no problem, and got the trophy to reach the mountain. We made it there in pretty good condition and we were more than prepared to fight the final boss of Act 4. At the start of the fight, the Ravenous Reach follows a very simple pattern. It will debuff the heroes in the back and then hit the one at the front with a massive punch that will do tons of damage and send them all the way back to the end of the party. If you allow this to continue, all of your heroes will be debuffed and eventually hit by a massive punch that they're not likely to survive. But luckily, our preparation comes in handy because we have the same strategy as we use for the Leviathan, a man at arms with the Surgeon Path that effectively makes him immune to being moved. With this, he will always be sitting at the front and he will take every single punch, but he is one of the few characters that can actually absorb such obnoxiously large amounts of damage. You will notice that the boss himself is also very resistant to physical damage, but rather weak to damage over time. So our Runaway and Plague Doctor were busy inflicting all kinds of fire and poison, and this made quick work of its very small HP. Once it's dead, it actually mutates into a second form that changes its stats, and this time it's actually quite resistant to fire and poison, but relatively weak to debuffs, so our two girls adapted to this and started using different moves. During this second phase, the boss gains the ability to generate dodge tokens, which are a little bit annoying, and these dodge tokens will be converted into guaranteed critical attack tokens that are extremely powerful. You want to avoid this at all costs, but we have an ability from the Highwayman called Tracking Shot. If you upgrade it, this ability will remove the existing dodge tokens and prevent any enemy from getting new dodge tokens. So with that, we had the most dangerous part of this second phase under control, and eventually it also fell to our damage. The third and final phase is by far the most dangerous one. Here, the Ravenous Reach gains the ability to heal itself and hit all of your party members at once, though we managed to mitigate this a little bit with some debuffs. It can also now apply massive bleed damage and then punish you very harshly if you don't heal it quickly. But for this, we had Cauthorize, an ability from the Runaway that allows her to heal anyone bleeding, which was really handy. The boss now can also generate Repose tokens, which lets it attack you back and deal tons of extra damage. But for this, again, we had an answer. Our Highwayman could steal the tokens with Highway Robbery, and our Man at Arms could also use Bellow to straight up remove them. While all of this was happening, we also managed to stack quite a bit of fire and poison damage onto it, and eventually this took its toll, and the boss of Act 4 finally fell. It was time to brace ourselves for Act 5, and for this huge task, we trusted our original four characters. At this point, they had become very strong and reliable, with most of their important moves already unlocked, and we focused on going out of our way to visit certain areas to unlock their best trinkets. This worked out pretty well. For our Man at Arms, we found some defensive trinkets, which were very appropriate, since he would be taking hits and defending other characters very frequently. 
Our plague doctor, on the other hand, found herself a rare trinket that increased her HP by a lot but reduced her attack. But this wasn't a problem, since most of her attack is done via poison over time, it didn't really affect her damage output and it was a net buff with no real downside. We also visited the sprawl and got very lucky at finding a parrying patriarch. This makes the dodge tokens of our highwayman even more effective than they already are, and by defeating the librarian yet again, we got our hands on his trophy, the best of the two that he can drop. This one just has a really powerful side effect. Every time you land a critical attack, that enemy will also get hit by an additional fire attack. And that alone would be very good on our team, since we have two characters that can land criticals somewhat often. But thanks to the extra fights that we took, we actually got two trinkets, one for each of them, that made their critical attacks even more consistent. So yeah, we had a team that was capable of inflicting massive amounts of damage over time. And if we didn't want to wait for all of that damage to happen slowly, well, let's just say that we also had an ability to make it happen a little bit faster. Wow. How much damage will this do, you wonder? 82! What? Idris was right! That is the way to go! Bye, my son! It had been some time since I felt this powerful, but we had to focus, because right ahead awaited the very final boss of Darkest Dungeon 2. Without spoiling too much, this boss has more HP than all of the previous Ag bosses combined, and also includes elements of each of them, making it a uniquely long and interesting challenge. So instead of analyzing every little detail, I'm just gonna let you sit back and witness what happened. Wait! Name the puppy! Oof, last second. Chad, you're here with me. Gaze now upon your great achievement, the sum total of your failings, your body of work. So the gimmick of this fight is that he hits me with blight, and then I have to resist it. What? One hit? <gasps> what? Turn end, right. <clears throat> Remember, you don't want to get a lot of uh, buffs on the second phase. Now we're fine, I think. This is pretty good. Let's use that ounce. We really cannot make this thing blight ever, so... Yeah. It's nice that she heals a bit. Oh, nice crit. Well done. I'm blind from being soft. Yikes. Oh, thank goodness. Nine damage and we mark it? I think it's worth it. Piling up though. Agony. Ooh, nasty. We need to get rid of that. That cannot be dodged. Let's do it. Help him out. Remove the horror. Okay, good. 
Uh, this will do... There's a good chance to stun it too. Excellent work. He resisted it, but we're burning it though. Cooperation is the key. Hmm. Everything is on cooldown. What do I heal, guys? Do I try to hit this for like very small chance of lighting it? Probably, right? It worked! <laughs> I poisoned the guts. Okay, good. Um, I couldn't. I could defend one of these boys. Let's do it. I didn't think that would work. Uh. What does Samuel do again? Yeah, and she heals a bit. That's nice. Collaboration confers advantage. Look at all those resists. Nice. Again. Nice. What a boy. Bit nasty that one though. This shouldn't go on for much longer. Come on. I might regret slowly. using these so early. But... Sanity returns. Come on, lady. We need a crit from you. Can you do two damage, lady? Let's find out. Yeah, two to two. Perfect. Next phase. Now, very careful now. We cannot have too many positive tokens, or else he'll steal them. I'd like to defend her, though, if I can. Well done. 200 health, man. That's gross. Dot stack, stack dots. Yeah, 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 I'm on it. I'm on it, guys. Not so easy, though, I think. He resists them. Not ideal, chat, not ideal. But it's also not the end of the world, really. Oh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Take it easy. Nice crit without setting it up. Okay, how much damage can we do? 24 and mark it. Mm, I don't know. I think stack it a bit more. We could even give them, give him that. That's generosity. really well time, I think. What a welcome one, nonetheless. Yeah, yeah. Next round, maybe. Oh, shit. I think we had too many, huh? Can we steal them from round four? No stun. That's good, that's good, that's good. He can take it. We need to steal some of this stuff though. This is bad. Okay. We're doing damage over time, so this doesn't matter that much. I think.
Guard the gun that is targeted? Yeah, 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 I understand that. But if I guard, I give myself too many tokens. It's also a problem. You understand, right? Um, yeah, you do. This road cannot be walked alone. I'm going for it. Now she can use Absinthe next turn. 13 damage is not good enough. Elytra heal 10? No. Oh, Chad, is there a chance she could die? Probably not, right? <laughs> Why is his health uh, split in several? Does something happen when we reach that? I've forgotten. Oh, that's how much damage I need to do so it doesn't reach it. Okay. Yeah, I figured it was something like that. But... Thank you. I wasn't sure. This is perfect. This is a lot of buffs, but it's not four, right? So it should be deja vu. This is good too. It's not four. He shouldn't steal this. He can't. He probably can't steal guard. So. <laughs> this will do six. No, we need to do more. Unless someone can heal this way. Oh, I could heal for 20. Mm. Damage, 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 or else we get the big attack. Wait! Hold up. I thought I needed four! What the hell? That's good that he's looking at the tank though. Shit, I can't steal more, dude. He's gonna steal them from me next. Oh, uh, what do I do? Take my chances, 50-50? Not good. Oh, dude, I can't. What does he have more? Ah! Three dodge, one speed. Oh, I had three dodges, damn it. 50-50 on the boss might as well be a hundred, by the way. Does this ignore dodge? No, it doesn't. Oof, guys. This is really scary, man. What the hell am I doing? God, thanks. I just don't know what you want me to do. Come on! Nice. Dude, our tank is being such a champ. I think we got this. Yeah, it's nearly dead. Do I reposition, maybe? Do I reposition, considering that it's probably gonna die? I reposition, right? But this isn't a good reposition, actually. No, I reposition with him. Does he have the right move? He does. Yeah, we're fine. This is much better. Perfect. A little heal, maybe? Oh, is this worth it? Oh, this is worth it for me, though. Very worth it. Perfect. Did I? Final phase. Behold the hateful god upon his throne. Your failures make flesh. <laughs> no ranged attack, no nothing. Else. We need to kill these little Kirobs together. 
Wait, why can't I do crush? Uh, well, retribution will do then. A bit weird this one, but sure. Nice, it was crit though. Fire? Resistant. Reverts my stuff. <laughs> no. Nice. They do a bunch of stuff. What? Should be pretty good. The enemy nice. Weakens and wanes. Uh, I need to do some turn to recover from this horrible madness. I don't know what to do though. Let's defend her. She's a bit squishy right now. Oh! <gasps> what? No way, that's fantastic! Oh, okay. Uh, I can't hit the back though. That would be someone else's task. <gasps> that's great! Five to eight. And it's taking three. We got it! Face your failure. You will go first. Will you go first? Who goes first? He's got a crit ready. You go first. Wait. Oh, range gone. Shit. Uh, take the dodge then. Should have done her, she's defended after all. Just to heal him a bit or something. Uh, maybe I switch my defense to him now? Use a heal on myself. Oh, that's so chunky. I'm gonna do it. And I'm gonna defend him. Actually, he's got dodge. Oh no! Oh no! I should have realized, man. He couldn't turn my crit, though. Okay, this is good, though. Wait, no, it's losing its turn. Oh no. Well, I need to defend him. Why can't I do this? Oh. can rely only upon each other. Nice. Nice. Come on, buddy. You gotta fucking destroy them now, man. Seven damage. And I'm blind. No! I'm gonna lose! I'm gonna lose! Because I can't do anything! He's so fast, yet he can't do anything. Oh. Come on. It's okay, it's okay. He goes now. 16. That's better. We starting with the hardest one. Try to get out of the uh, get it out of the way. Come on. Not too terrible, actually. Nice. He 
can't attack it back, can he? We're gonna need at least two more turns. It's gonna be a bit of a drag. 7 to 11. 10% chance to crit, though. Yes! Let's go! Emancipation is at hand. Unmake Exultation. Illusion. Nice. Okay. Next. Uh, woof. What's coming next, guys? I wonder. She's gonna reverse all of this, isn't it? Yep. That's maybe okay? I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's alright. The game, maybe? Maybe don't bother? We're in decent shape. What does that do? Ah! It's okay, it's little, it's little, it's little. Hopefully. I'm blind as heck though, that's bad. Oh no! No, the guy in the back! The guy in the back needs to die! You don't wanna... Okay, I got crit, thank goodness. 15. We need to kill it, we need to kill it, we need to kill it, really badly. Uh... Shit, 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 shit. Okay, you need to not... You need to... Get rid of your blindness somehow, lady. Yes! Nice, that's good, that's good. That's all we need. Not too bad. I mean... I can just move back a bit. Maybe. I need a bolster, real quick. Let's give ourselves tokens so he disrupts mine. Wait, I can't use ranged? That's fine. This is fine, I think. More damage to the... What? He resisted it. Chad, who's going? You are. Wait, why did it spawn in the back? Oof, nasty. I can't. I'll take the stress, actually. Nice, he resisted it. How much damage? She's blind for some reason. Oh, because my torch, nice. Uh, five to seven. It's got low. Try this. Nice. Can't heal next, that's fine. Uh, hold line, maybe. Ounce of prevention or more damage? More damage. Canonical ending to him. Yep. <laughs> I'll try. Nice. I thought she was being guarded, man. What's going on?
Will I get protected next turn, I hope? Come on, give me a crit! Okay, two more turns. And that's it. Biggie. Nice. I think this is pretty good. She's gonna heal by herself, right? Yeah, let's do this. She takes a bit of damage, but then she heals from the Samsara. Or not Samsara. Uh, Exaltation. Yeah, she can take that. Now he dies. Oh, he's not dead yet. Oof. Okay, soon, 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 soon. Honestly, your final drink, probably. What can I do to keep everything on afloat? Let's try this. Nice, what a nice heal, dude. That's because of all the in herbs. Nice, he missed, he can miss that. Excellent. This thing is really an echo. We still have two more? Oh, okay. Say goodbye, little guy. Ooh, that's excellent, actually. That helps quite a bit. Oh, my crits. Let's go. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Next one coming right up. Nice, hit him hard. Give him hell, dude. Sure. It's almost dead on its own. Almost, almost, almost. It's okay. Okay. Just remove it. Gonna be a question. Okay, now Hoomst, guys. Who's it gonna be? Do that. The pulse slows. Sanity returns. Um. Shouldn't he do the other move? It's at the end of the turn, I think. I reckon she could do it quite easily. That again. Your turn, buddy. We hit him with two good turns, and this could be it. No joke. Why can't I do this uh, skill block? Uh, we still kept repose, though. Nice. Come on, do ten. Come on, do ten. Do ten! Six, okay. He needs some help, man. He really needs some help. Mm. Well, he can do it himself. Let's go! Wait, no, he cannot actually. Mm. What's coming then?
We will have to be next turn. Guys, I think we have this! We've done so much damage! <laughs> the fiend's strength dwindled. Yes! It will probably die! Oh my god. You were here! Yes! Die! Die! We only had to do three. We did like 400 damage. The thing is to destroy yourself, but the world will spring anew from the memory you kept of it. Your confession is complete. The cosmic axes are aligned once more. Forgive yourself. Humanity is a weak hypothesis, after all. An unbalanced equation. An imperfect angle. We sow the seeds of our ruin and seek to deny its reckoning. We make mountains of our mistakes, monsters of our misdeeds. We slip and stumble, we fail and we falter. And yet, in each of us, a hopeful light. Holding fast against the hellish shadows that gather between our good intentions. And in each of us, a limitless emptiness. Of a darkest dungeon. Wow. Dang, that was cool. <laughs> oh. The flame grows stronger. I honestly had a feeling we would not get this far. I thought we for sure would die. But we did it. We did it, guys. Oh, man, that did feel incredible. What an adventure. Thank you all for being part of it. Honestly, it was amazing. I love the story of this game. I love the gameplay. I love the characters. I love the music. I bet that if I had a look at the code, I would love it too. This game really is just that absolutely incredible. And if you haven't experienced it for yourself, you know, what are you waiting? Go buy it. Go buy it. It's great. Fantastic. As of the making of this video, Darkest Dungeon 2 has been out on PC for a little bit and will presumably come out on consoles in a little while. I cannot recommend this game enough. And if you're going to get it on the Epic Game Store, you can also use creator code or Starva at no extra cost to directly support my channel. Thanks so much for considering doing that, and I'll see you in the next adventure.